tis the season to be spooky. It's Halloween month, and as such, every YouTuber is telling you their top 5 or top 10. So, as a YouTuber, I am naturally going to jump on this trend and tell you my top 5 horror movies as it sits right now in 2024. Now, obviously, as I discover more horror movies and rediscover old horror movies, this could change over years, months or years, even decades. So, these are, as it stands right now in 2024, my top five horror movies of all time. And this is subjective, so obviously people are going to say, no, that's a terrible movie and that's a great movie. These are my personal opinions and these are my choices for my top five. So I'm going to start off at number five with 28 Days Later. What can I say about 28 Days Later? It's one of those movies that can't be restored to higher formats because it was shot, I believe, on a digital format that was probably topped out at 1080i or 1080p or something. I'm not 100% sure of the source, but it's very hard to restore this because there's no information there to enhance. There's nothing to up it to 4K. And I feel like that just kind of works. Obviously, this would have been shot digitally, but it helps for the graininess of the picture. Putting it on a higher resolution screen like a 4K TV makes it so much more scarier. And Killian is great in it, by the way. Yep, Killian's in this movie. This is the one that kind of introduced him to a lot of the world. And it is an amazing movie. Movie. It's like, it's one of those zombie movies that you kind of don't really plan for. I mean, obviously we've had Dawn of the Dead and all that in the past, but 28 Days Later really blew the lid off for what zombie genres can be. And for that, it's my number five. I'm putting this as number five. So that's number five. Number four is The Blair Witch Project. This movie terrified me as a kid. I absolutely was terrified of The Blair Witch. And it's because you don't see The Blair Witch, which is what makes it so much more scary. And so your mind kind of has to fill in the blanks. And yeah, that's basically the part of what makes it so scary to me. Like, I have the theory of this movie of how it actually ended. And... I mean, other people can say, oh, I, don't, I thought the movie ended like this and all oh, the witch got them all at the end of the day. I felt like the two, oh, I, I don't want to spoil it, but <laughs> I have a theory about this movie that, um, yeah, I have a theory about how it ends and I will tell you the theory. So if you're not here, skip ahead by about 10 seconds and then actually 20 seconds and you will, you'll be past the spoiler. So in three, two, one, I think Joshua and the other guy teamed up and got rid of Heather together. I think they kind of did it together. I think that's the spoiler. I think that's what the movie was about. They lured her into the forest and then, yeah, that was, I think, the dark ending. In my view, I think that was what happened at the end of The Blair Witch, which is why I think it's so dark. That's one of my favorite horror movies. I think it's really, really dark. But welcome back to the guys who skipped over the spoiler. And yeah, that's my theory on The Blair Witch Project. And yeah, I put it in my horror movies, top five horror movies for a reason. Not because it's any great movie. Also, it was, the way it was promoted when it was a, um, a new movie was that this was found footage. These people were actually missing. Now, obviously, as times went on, we found out, yeah, it wasn't really. But this was one of the first real movies that utilized the internet to get speculation of, oh, this is found footage. It's real. It's real life. And you kind of had to sit through the credits at the end to find out, oh, it's not actually true. Number three on this list, what can I say? Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the greatest horror movies ever made, in my opinion. And it's because it was limited in terms of gore. Now, as we've went on throughout the years, in months and years, we've slowly seen this trend of just show everything. I mean, the ratings will get away with it. Just show it all. But this had to be smart because this was produced at a time when if you showed stuff like that, they would literally ban the movie. Like you couldn't release a movie like this. So I think this does it smart. Like less is more. I think this actually gets it right. And that ending sequence is one of the most iconic in horror movie history. It is an amazing sort of movie. Now this is a, this is one of the first 4Ks released ever, any, anywhere in the world. It is the German release, I believe. And it doesn't have Dolby Vision. There has been another release of this with Dolby Vision and 
with some aspects changed. But this is basically a direct scan of the um, the 4K or, or the 16mm um, negative. And essentially what they did was scan it, clean up a bit of the uh, cuts or whatever, but it's essentially how the film would look right now if you were to rescan it and do nothing to it. Except clean it up and fix the rips in the film or whatever. So this is really close to what would the film would actually look like today in terms of how it's degraded over time, how it looks. Dolby Vision obviously plays with the colours and fixes a lot of colours and pops it for a modern generation. But I feel like this is the better version for me, the 4K that didn't have any of that turbine steel collection. Now obviously there's a turbine with Dolby Vision, but this is the one that's in my collection. And for those wondering what the back looks like, it just looks like that. Really nice, really nice piece. Um, number two in my collection, and this is where it cut, kind of gets difficult because I kind of rank these movies on the same level in terms of their impact, but one one over the other. So number two is Scream. I love Scream. I am a massive fan of how Scream did certain things. It was Wes Craven at his absolute best. And like, look, he learnt what he learned from A Nightmare on Elm Street prior to that and all of his catalog before that. And he implemented it as like, no, this is how horror movies should be. And there's been even speculation and people have even, I've seen interviews with Heather Camp and also Robert England about Scream actually taught people how to watch A New Nightmare or, yeah, the one with uh, where Freddy enters the real world or whatever. This educated people on how to watch that movie because this was such a trailblazer and then people were like, yeah, I actually understand A New Nightmare now because this is such a trailblazer and obviously Nev Campbell's freaking awesome. You also have like also like Dewey. WCW champion Dewey in that movie. He was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion at one point. So there you are. So yeah, you have Dewey in that one. <laughs> and also uh, Courtney Cox, you have her, you have like, I mean, what can I say? It's, it's one of those 90s movies that just define the era. It is such a trailblazer of a horror movie but also something that screams iconic 90s movie so for that it's one of my favorites for all, of all time i know every time halloween comes around i always tend to gravitate back towards scream so it's in my top five and it is number two now everyone who knows me knows number one is probably going to be a certain movie i've talked about it a lot on the channel everyone knows i've been trying to get it and I've managed to get it, but I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched the 4K transfer of it. I've got, I've watched it hundreds of times. But number one's A Nightmare on Elm Street. How can you go wrong with Freddy Krueger? Like, this movie is such a massive part of my upbringing and why I love horror movies and why I love movies in general. I remember watching this for the first time on a VHS tape rented from my video store when I was four. And you might say, oh, what, what were you watching horror movies at four? Well, to understand that, you have to understand times were different in the 90s. Obviously, you kind of had to, I mean, culturally significant movies, obviously, I don't know if I'll be showing this to a four-year-old today, but it's something of a movie that culturally at the time was such a big deal. And obviously for me, I grew up on this. I was raised on Nightmare on Elm Street, and I absolutely love it. I mean, I absolutely appreciate that I was raised on this. I love this movie. And it's like Titanic. I was raised on Titanic. I watched that over and over again. In terms of horror movies, this is the one I go to the most. This is the one that has got the most play over the years. I've got the VHS tape of it. I got, I used to have the DVDs. I think I lost them a long time ago. Have the Blu-rays and now I've got the 4K of Elm Street. And I think that is amazing. Haven't watched this one yet, obviously. I am going to get to it eventually. You know I'll probably save it for Halloween. I will probably save it for the 31st. But just in case you're wondering what it actually looks like, I'm keeping it sealed for the time being. It kind of looks really cool. Like Warner Brothers have done a really good job with the slip cover. And I am, I'm just over the moon about this one. So yeah, that's my top five guys. If you're wondering what they look like. Number five, 28 Days Later. Number four, The Blue Witch Project. Number three, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Number two, Scream, the first one. 
And number one, A Nightmare on Elm Street, because you can't go wrong with Freddy Krueger. And while we're talking about Freddy, let's bring him out. Come over here, Freddy. You can end the video with me, mate. So yeah, number one, Nightmare on Elm Street. Hold, you want to hold that, Freddy? There we are. I love A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I think, yeah, these are my top five for Halloween. Maybe you'll check out A Nightmare on Elm Street if you haven't already. Maybe you'll watch it again. Maybe you'll choose any of these movies, or maybe you'll have a completely top five. Jump in my comment section and let me know your top five. And while you're at it, why don't you check out one of my other videos? I mean, I make videos a lot, so something will be over on one of the sides of the video. Check them out if you want, and give it a like, subscribe, and watch everything, and I don't know. <laughs> be nice to each other. And yeah, let's make Freddy just stand there if I can make him. I don't think he's going to stand there on his own accord, though. Let's put him up against there. There we go. He'll just stand like that. Peace.